Bears, 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 country podcast. Viewers, beware. You are now in Bears country. I wanted to get a couple things off my chest, kind of unannounced. I want to talk about Kyler Gordon today. After watching his Meet the Rookies on the Bears network um, and their website as well. So this kid, wow. After watching it, and I highly, rec I highly recommend that everyone go watch the Kyler Gordon Meet the Rookies. I, I recommend you watch all three of them. If you're a Bears fan, you should have by now. But Kyler Gordon, I could kind of see it on day one when, when, they, when they drafted him. I could see it in his face. I just I said to my wife, he's going to be a superstar. And really, after seeing the Meet the Rookies, I can't disagree with myself at all. It's, I, I think he's, I'm going to say it, I, I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I know you're probably all spitting out your drink right now, choking on your lunch. I'm sorry. I do. And there's a few reasons why, and I'm going to show you. It has nothing to do with football. It has to do with the person. Again, kind of like I talked about Matt Eberflus. And why I think Matt Eberflus could be a great head coach. It has to do with the person. And this person, Kyler Gordon, he was what you might call today a hyperactive kid that you would put on Ritalin or something. But his parents raised him the right way by involving him in many different things. In fact, if you watch the video, uh, there really isn't anything he didn't do. And there really isn't anything that he didn't excel at. In fact, he excelled at everything. And then when you watch him get drafted and he comes to the Bears, the look on his face on draft day just was different. The look on his face today in interviews is different. What people are saying about him, what coaches are saying about him, what they're doing with him in practice is different. So... I want to play some clips here just to kind of prove my point about how well he was raised and about how really he just needed to be put, just give him something to do, and he did it well. I just remember jumping on the ones I liked the most and playing them the most. But the natural talent was through the roof. There was something about that kid, man, that the other kids just didn't have it. They didn't have just the energy of I think it was the belief. He believed he could do anything. You know, you'd ask him to do it, and he would never, I don't know, I'm not sure. He would just do it every single time. So he did Kung Fu for a year and excelled at it. And me being a gymnastics coach helped with all the flexibility and stuff. So just one day I walked down the street to P2 Dance Academy, and Miss Aga was a teacher there. She just took one look at him and just said, cuteness. Oh, my gosh, I would love to have him here. And one class, two class, three class, four classes, competition. It just built up. Everything they taught, he took and ran with it. All the way to the NFL. And by the way, his mom's right. He's a very good looking kid. So they're talking there about just how everything that they get. The, the kid is just, he's good at everything. And I think we all kind of might know someone like that. I mean, I'm... I'm kind of good at a lot of things, but not great at anything. And if you watch the video, they'll, they talk about how he won multiple, multiple things. So I just, I'm really impressed by the, the parenting and how they raised the child to put him in the, in the things to keep his brain busy and, you know, not just decide to do it a lot, you know, take the easy way out, which is for a lot of people, you know, I don't think that we should be doing that. So kudos to them, putting the kid in the right things, keeping him interested. But eventually he starts to whittle it down to something he loves the most. So let's go ahead and watch the next clip I have, and then we can kind of talk about that. He's one of those kids that can do absolutely anything he put his mind to. 
when he found that sweet spot, that kid was like 100%. When you have those kids that are naturally talented, they get lazy. When you find the ones that work hard also, they become great. I think that's what happened with him. He's so naturally talented, but he figured out how to work hard, put the two together, and it's probably what got him to where he is now. Again, just some more examples of, of, of other people explaining the same thing about him. You know, give give him something to do. Don't put him in front of a video game. Put those athletic skills to, you know, let him learn and, and take those to, to their maximum. And it's just another compliment there. So one more thing I, I, we're going to show. We have three more little clips left, and then we'll wrap this up. So let's just show you the next one. sick of dancing. He needed something that was moving faster than dance or than pool or than any of those things. It had to be moving faster. He tried baseball. He was chasing butterflies. It was so slow. The ball came around and it was just, it was on. This kind of goes back to what I was talking about like last night with uh, Matt Eberflus being a critical thinker. Um, I really... I really believe him to be a critical thinker as well. He he's thinking ahead at every moment. He's he's contemplating everything. He's balancing everything out in his head. Uh, this kid is he seems physically sound, mentally sound, and emotionally sound. And you hear his dad there say how he told him to catch the ball with his hands. Well, there's a there's a really good clip at the end of. The meet the meet the rookies about his dad that I I didn't want to spoil so you'll have to go watch that yourself because it's uh it kind of brought me to tears it actually it really did bring me to tears I'm not kidding <laughs> all right so just a couple more here we'll talk about those and then we can wrap this up Did you see him jumping over those? Did you see that? And then did you see after that? Him going and, and training with this person helped him to maximize his skills. And I'm going to play this one more time because you have to watch him jumping again. He looks like a gazelle. If you go look at his, his measurables, I believe his... Per bare necessities the other night with Jordan Silvera, I believe that uh, his vertical is 40, a 48 inch vertical. And he's technically under six foot. So I'm gonna, I want to show you this again. Just watch him jumping here. I mean, it, it was like he was in slow motion. And then after that, they show him with just how well he's able to use his body. I mean, this kid is, oh boy, he's he's exciting. So one of the last things I want to just show you here is just how he, how he's able to use all of this that he's applied through just all of the training and the the balance training and even the mental training that goes along with all the other things that he's done that's in, encapsulated him into this wonderful person that I think is on his way to the Hall of Fame. Let's watch some clips here when he was younger. Kind of see him mature and grow, but even in eighth grade when he was one of the littler guys on the team, you could tell that he was different. Just the way that he moved, just pure athleticism and explosiveness. 
Did you see that body control on the sideline in eighth grade? I mean, enough said. Enough said for me. I think that you take all of this into account and go do your own research. I highly encourage you to watch the Meet the Rookies and judge for yourself. Am I wrong here? Is it possible that we drafted the best cornerback in the entire draft? I mean, how, how many Hall of Famers come out of each draft? You're lucky if you get one, two. We can all speculate who we think who's, is going to be a Hall of Famer during the draft process. And, oh, this kid's going to be a Hall of Famer. This kid's going to be a Hall of Famer. And how many times is everyone wrong, including you and myself? And I might be wrong on this, but what I'm trying to show you here is some of the things that make up the person, not the player. And it takes the person to become a Hall of Famer. So thank you very much for tuning into this. I appreciate it. Uh, well, I'm going to be live tomorrow night, August 1st, with Jordan Silvera. And we're going to be talking some Justin Fields. And I'm going to have some more fun, exciting stuff to talk about. I'm sorry I'm a little bit tired. I've been working on this for a while. It's a little late for me right now. Just wanted to get this out here for you guys. But I promise I'll be a little bit more uh, energetic tomorrow. Plus, I'll have someone to talk to. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. And bears. <laughs>